if you listen to me in the afternoon with any regularity, you'll know that I'm a huge Rush fan. So I'm ridiculously excited to get the opportunity to talk with Getty Lee for the second time in very few weeks. The reason for this, of course, is the release of his autobiography, My and Life, which is out today. Go buy it. Getty's going to be coming over for a five-date in-conversation tour in December where he'll be joined on stage by a special guest interviewer. He'll read passages from the book. He'll then share thoughts and stories taken from his experience. And then fans will have the chance to participate in a special Q&A with Getty answering their questions directly. What more could you want? Well, I already got to ask him some questions. And the first thing I wanted to know was what his thoughts are on doing a very different type of tour and doing it by himself. This is a new experiment you know um let me set it up this way i spent over 40 years playing with the same two gentlemen they were my close friends they were my dear bandmates they were amazing musicians but i was in a club everything we did we did together or we didn't do it and so in my life post rush a lot of things have occurred, and mostly uh, one for one reason or another at my instigation. And that's because I want to do things that I've never done before. You know, to, to form another band, to get out there on the road, didn't feel comfortable to me. It was like, well, I, I've just been doing that with the greatest partners I could ever have. Why would I want to do that again? Uh, in a in a suboptimal environment, so I thought, okay, fresh start, you know. Uh, and it began with with writing my big beautiful book of bass, and I enjoyed that experience a lot. And I enjoyed getting out there and meeting fans, really a lot. And so, for one reason or another, I came to write this memoir, which was not the top of my list to write because. I found it always to be a very indulgent idea talking about yourself, but being locked down in the pandemic alone with the aftermath of, of Neil's passing, all that had transpired in the last few years of his life had left me quite unhappy. I was kind of stuck, needed to find a way to move forward. So uh, part of that was, you know, trying therapy and the other part of that was trying to look back into my own life plus the fact that my mother was suffering from dementia and I was watching her lose her memory those things drove me to write this book and so you know me Darren you know the kind of person I am when I go down a rabbit hole I go down the rabbit hole so uh it was a great kind of adventure for me to look backwards, and I love the experience of writing. So all that said and done, and here we are a number of years later, and so what do you do? You have to go out and promote the thing. That's part of life as a public figure. And so I thought the way I want to do that, and I can't go and do that 500-person fist-bumping, hello, face-to-face -face thing, in a post-COVID world, I'm way too much of a germaphobe for that. Sorry, I just can't do that right now. So I thought, okay, let's do a conversational tour. Let's see if I could put together a program where I have interesting guests, different guests every night, chit-chatting, getting into stories about my life and, and talking about life uh, in the rock business. And then I'll do some reading, different kind of performance or and then I want to spend a good amount of time taking questions from the audience and answering them as directly as I can. So there is some kind of feedback, some contact. Uh, so that was the motivation behind it. And I'm kind of following through with that. Last week, I got to talk to Getty Lee about all the stuff that's in his new book, My F in Life, which is out today. And there's some great stories, as you might imagine, about Rush. And I wanted to know what Alex Lifeson thought of the book. You know, when I finished this book, of course, he plays such a large part in, in this book. I talk about him so often. He was the first person I sent a copy to because it was it meant so much to me that he be okay with it. And, you know, he just wrote me the most beautiful letter of appreciation and he loved the book and he loved 
the way I had told our story because really I'm telling our story. My story is so much of his story. Uh, and it meant so much to me that I didn't really, it didn't really matter to me what anyone else thinks of the book after that. I said, okay, Big Al's okay with it. I'm good with that. That's so nice. Everybody should have an Alex in their life, I guess. Everyone should have Alex in their life. Well, you know, I, 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 I've had the honor a couple of times. One person I did not ever meet, unfortunately, was Neil. I think a lot of people have a, what I understand is a, a, probably not the right view of who Neil was, because he came across as pretty intense and serious, but that wasn't always the case, was it? Not with you, anyway. Yeah, of course, he had a big brain, and he had a large vocabulary, and he was a tall man, and he was a very, um, a man with with rules and principles and and a, a, an outlook, a decided outlook on things. And so that intimidates some people. Uh, but with Alex and I, of course, he was just that goof who pulled up in a Ford Pinto back in 1974 uh, with greasy hair and uh, no shirt and his drums in garbage bags. And pulled into audition for our, our little rock band in, in uh, just outside of Toronto. So he was always a goof to me and to Al. And we had this, you know, ability to make each other laugh. And I really think that it got us through a lot of garbage, really a lot of difficult moments uh, because of, of that. And even when he was ill, you know, uh, Al and I could go and visit him and try to bring a smile to his face, which at times was not easy. Uh, he went through a lot, but he was a very stoic man and a very, he used to say, even at the worst of times, mustn't grumble, mustn't grumble. And every once in a while, if you started talking about his illness, he would just, he would just blow it. Let's not talk about that crap. Uh, and he'd want to talk about substantive things, you know, and that's how he was. And that's who he was. He was a great guy to be friends with because he was always interesting and uh, always surprising.